Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like quarter life crisis, relationship issues, confidence, money stuff, health stuff, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. When I started this podcast just three months ago, I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that I wanted to put my message out there in hopes that I can attract like-minded people. Because honestly, when I decided to come up with this theme of adulthood and talking about all these struggles that I have online... I really was just trying to find a community for myself because that was what I thought was lacking for me in this online space where we are very used to looking at content like self-improvement, self-care. But oftentimes, there are a lot of internal struggles that people are not comfortable sharing about. But I was very sure that everyone at one point in their life, was going through as well. And I wanted to cover about these topics that people might be struggling with because that's what I was struggling with. And three months later, today we are at episode 13. And I think that it is safe to say that there is a demand in what I'm doing. I have been receiving really positive feedback, not just by my own network but also from strangers in the internet and I am very happy to at least know that I am not alone in this and today I wanted to make this episode because becoming a content creator has always been what I wanted to do but for the longest time I didn't believe that I could And I know that many of you out there, you may have a dream that you are too afraid to chase. Some of you might also want to be a content creator like myself, but you don't know where to start or what to expect. Or maybe you are just too afraid of the unknown that you didn't dare to take action at all. So I just wanted to... In a way, celebrate this milestone with you guys that I finally hit three months and at the same time share with you what I've learned along the way. I would say that this sharing, it's not just really specific to podcasts, but it is applicable to any creative dreams that you have or maybe entrepreneurship as well. So I really hope that you will enjoy this. So... For those of you who are thinking of becoming a content creator, I do want to share with you why did I choose podcast as a platform instead of just posting on Instagram and TikTok or maybe posting on YouTube. So first thing first, I knew that I wanted to create long form content because I know that with the message that I want to talk about, having a long form content allows me to go in depth with the concept that I want to talk about, with the struggles that I want to talk about. And I want it to be something that people are not rushing to be done consuming, where they have already intentionally come to this platform to look for long-form content. So that leaves me with only two choices, YouTube or podcast. I mean, at this stage of age, with the platforms that I'm familiar with, and I know that people of my age and my demographic are active in. I only have these two options. And I previously was a YouTube creator and I kind of still am, but not like 100% yet. I used to make YouTube partner and I spent two years creating content on YouTube. So I know exactly how it works. And I knew that with my current schedule and commitment, YouTube is going to be a lot more time consuming for myself because there are a lot of visuals that needs to be taken into consideration. There are a lot of planning that goes behind the scenes. And I knew that with a full-time job that I have right now, 
I just didn't have the capacity to do it well. And so I decided to go with a podcast just because it is an easier creation process for myself. I know that right now I'm also creating a video podcast because I want to repurpose this content to other platforms. But my video right now, it's very simple. And I'm going to share with you more about how I plan to improve this moving forward. But I chose this because I know that my strength in content creation are also my words and my voice. At this state, it's not so much on the visual creative that I'm doing. Like I cannot visualize videos like Casey Neinstead or Rowena Sai or Lavender. And, and so I decided to start with a podcast. And in just a short three months, I really learned a lot of things that I cannot wait to share with you. The first thing that I learned about creating a podcast is that long-form content really takes up a lot of your time to create. So the last few years, I have also been creating content, but I was focusing on Instagram Reels, TikTok, and you know, just short-form content on my stories and my feed as well. And now that I am creating this long-form content, I realized that a lot of thought really goes into keeping the audience engaged because it is a long form content. Like I actually need to consider that if someone is committing to listen to a 20 or 30 minutes episode, I want to make sure that they feel that it's worth their time to be listening to it. And so I need to make sure that I am giving them as much value as possible. And on the other hand, I also need to take into consideration where are my pauses or I should include certain stories in between what I'm sharing to keep it engaging if I am repeating myself when I am sharing. And not to forget, because the content that I'll be creating is longer, the original files that I'll be working with is a lot longer as well. Because, you know, this episode that you're listening to, it's probably going to be between 10 to 20 minutes. But the actual file would be about 30 minutes long or even further than that. I've worked with files that are as long as an hour and a half and I have to trim it down by a lot. So that means that the editing time is actually a lot longer as well because there are a lot of things that I would need to filter. And at the same time, editing can be fun, but if you're editing just a person's voice for a very long time, I get sleepy editing because I got bored of listening to my voice. I know it can be really calming for you and it is quite soothing. I gotta give myself credits to that. But what you are listening to right now, it's really a polished version of what I'm saying. While the file that I'm working with, it could be me repeating the same thing for three or four or five times. So it can get quite daunting. And with a full-time job right now, I have to tell you very honestly that I am still struggling to really manage my time well. I would say that at least I'm able to identify how my creative process is. Like when do I take my time to write? And when is the best time for my energy to record an episode and stuff like that? And I noticed that for me, writing and planning for my podcast takes the longest time because as much as we have chat gpt or any writing ai tools right now there is only that much that they can help because of the nature of my content and so with all the stories and experiences and feelings that i want to share with you all of this need time to be thought through to be planned into a flow that can work well for me to share with you so writing process does take a very long time and this is the annoying part i'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with pareto's principle which pretty much states that your work expands to the time that you have to complete a task and because i know that my deadline for my podcast is every thursday morning i knew 
that I could have completed my draft and recorded my episode by the weekend, but I always end up procrastinating and procrastinating and end up just recording it on Tuesday or even Wednesday. And I really have to rush to the finishing edits and upload it. I'm really trying to change this habits because I know that this is not going to work out for me in the long term. Like I would really love to have a few content lined up ahead so that if there's any emergencies, if I was sick again, like just a a month ago, I don't need to be too stressed out about the deadline. So time is definitely something that I am still struggling with. And secondly, I want to say that it also takes time to find your voice on the microphone. One of the main concerns about becoming a content creator is that you are really putting yourself out there. Whether you are showing your face in front of the camera or maybe sharing your voice or your ideas to the world, there are a lot of things that you'd be afraid of. Like what if people judge me for what I do? Or what if people think that my idea is stupid? These are all the things that are very normal to be self-conscious of. And... It's true. It is not easy to speak on the mic because as you are speaking right now, you are also concerned about whether you are pronouncing. See, I can't say even this wrong. Like whether or not you are pronouncing your words right, whether the next key point that you have in mind, how can you form your current sentence to get to there. And you also are always worried that you have a very good point that you might miss out and you want to refer to your note but you want to sound natural and there's a lot of things that really goes in your mind and I can tell you that I am still struggling with all of this even right now. Just last week, I actually really struggled with my creative process. I really wrote up all my notes and I felt good about it but when I recorded it on Tuesday night, I started off really excited and wanting to complete it. But halfway through the recording, I realized that I was too tired to think. And I knew that my ideas just wasn't flowing to me as I am talking. And I ended up waking up the next early morning to record it again. Because I know that for me, I am a morning person. I am the kind of kid back in school that would wake up at 4 a.m. to study because that works better for me than to rush through the midnight because I just felt like when I wake up, my brain is more fresh. And so I did that. I just wanted to share that because people always tell me, oh my God, Wendy, you are so good at this. And I want to say that I'm not naturally good at this. I just keep on practicing and perfecting my skills as I go. Having said that, it doesn't mean that you will never find your voice on the internet. I know that a lot of people would cringe when they hear their voice or when they see themselves on the video. But for myself, I think that I have gone through so many phases of being uncomfortable and learning what works for me and what I like and what I want to sound like to the point that I actually quite enjoy consuming my own content as well. (laughs) I don't want to sound narcissistic, but I feel good that I'm able to achieve that kind of self-confidence in myself. It did take years though, so please be patient if you are still trying to find your voice on the microphone. Next up, you have to be your number one fan. If you are a content creator or an entrepreneur, you would probably know that putting your content out there or putting your product out there, it's really just the first part of the equation. Promotion is everything. As I was going through the analytics for the content that I've put out in this past three months, I realized that for those episodes where I put out a good content, but I didn't have time to share more about it, to remind people like, hey, I have a new episode that is up or, 
you know, sometimes I would have time to repurpose my long form into a few short TikToks or reels and share it out. Whenever I share those things, I get more views. But when I don't, even if it is a very good piece of content, it doesn't get as much attention as it should have been. And it's the same thing if you're selling something and you don't share about it, no one is going to know. Because if you are not promoting your own podcast or your own platform, who is going to do that for you? Sure, you might have friends who are supportive, who might want to help you to get things out there. But you also need to make the first move to let these supportive friends to know about your podcast first. And secondly, sometimes you might even need to go to the point of telling your friends exactly what to do. For example, in my podcast, I actually tell you guys to share this into your Instagram stories. Like be as specific as possible because sometimes people just don't think about all these things until you actually mention the specifics to them and they're like, oh yeah, I can do that why didn't i do that before and so you have to be your number one fan first in order to think of all these things to tell people so that you can get your message out there now i know that some of you maybe you are just starting and you are still really not confident about yourself or the content that you're putting out there yet and so you kind of feel like you want to hide in the corner and you don't want to sound too narcissistic and so full of yourself that you are constantly promoting your own thing but just know this you can only learn and improve if you actually put yourself out there and open yourself up for criticism and you'd be surprised by how often people are more supportive and positive than you think and sure there are going to be a few unnecessary criticism but this is just a part of the journey that you would need to learn to accept eventually. One more thing that I learned as I am creating this podcast is that there is always going to be room for improvement. But that also doesn't mean that just because things can be done better, that you have to wait until it's better to get it done. Okay, what I mean is I don't want perfectionism to get in your way as you are creating your masterpiece. Sure, I can improve this podcast with a better video edit. I can upgrade my sound system. I can record this in a better lighting. I can interview someone about this specific topic to make it better. But that doesn't mean that I have to do it all now because if I were to wait until all these conditions are met, when is that going to be? I have learned that as long as I feel happy with what I am right now, I am going to create based on what my capacity allows me to have right now. And that is because I've been a content creator for many, many years now. And I struggled with perfectionism for a very long time. I always felt like I needed to wait for something in order to really get it out there. But if I don't get started right now, if I don't create this podcast with this bare minimum setup that I have right now, how am I going to understand the platform or my audience how am I going to figure out the tech setup, the audio setup, my microphone setup, my camera setup to be ready to maybe interview guests in my platform in the future? There are so many things that I want to do and I have chosen to really do it one step at a time. So you would constantly realize that my podcast will never be the same because I'm already planning things one step at a time. So I know that as time goes on, I want to add chapter episodes on my podcast so that it's easier for you to refer to the timeline and skip to wherever you want to listen to, if that is more convenient for you. I know that I want to edit my videos to be better. Right now, it's really just me sitting and talking. And that is because I gathered that at this stage, my audio is the most important thing and video is secondary. And I honestly just don't have the capacity to edit it to be better. I know I can, 
but I just don't have the capacity. So I needed to figure out a way to either delegate it or outsource it. And having said that, I also really want to hear from you about what you think about my podcast so far. And if you have any topic requests, this is the perfect time for you to let me know as well. I actually have created a form for you to request for content or give me to feedback. And I am going to include this in my show notes for today's episode. And I would also place this into my link in my bio so that you can always come back and request for any topics if you thought about it. So if you have something in mind, please, please, please head to the link and fill up the form and let me know. Lastly, I learned that becoming a content creator, becoming an entrepreneur or achieving any big dreams for that matter is really a long-term game. You have to be really patient in getting towards where you want to be. At this rate, yes, I am celebrating that I am three months into this podcast. I really think that this is just equivalent to my first month because based on what I've observed in other people's success, I am looking at a minimum of two years of doing this consistently for me to be really good at what I'm doing and to get my big breakthrough. And I am no longer discouraged or impatient about it because I realize that time passes quite fast as you are just focusing in the process and the journey and not so much on the results. So right now, yes, I would look into my analytics to figure out what is working and what is not. And at that note, I want to share with you guys that in just three months of creating 12 episodes of podcast, I have garnered 70 new friends on my Spotify and I've had over 500 plays. And these numbers might not sound huge to people who have already made it, But for someone who has been talking about starting a podcast but never really actually take action, I'm very proud about it. I'm very happy to know that because I decided to not care about my fear and doubt myself anymore and just do it, in three months' time, I've already gotten this result. And imagine what can I achieve if I continue to do what I'm doing, if I continue to improve what I'm doing and get better and keep on sharing. Because I also believe that this growth is going to be exponential as well. So it's going to be up, up, up one day. But at this rate, I am, like I said, not focusing on the result, but just focusing on the journey because the journey is what's going to take me to the results. And so because it is a long-term game, you really have to be patient. Passion might be the reason that you get started and motivated at the beginning, but it's truly the discipline and the perseverance that is going to help you to keep on going to get to the point of success. And so there is so much to keep in mind as you move on in this journey. It's really about who you surround yourself with in this time that can continue to support you and encourage you as you keep on moving forward. Create an environment and a system that can work for you to keep on moving forward. And most importantly, always remember why you got into this in the first place. Like this entire journey of creating a podcast, it is not the easiest one. I am still always doubting myself. I am still always tired and stuck. And it's not the smoothest journey. It's not like it's fun and exciting all the time. But having said that, I always go back to why I started this podcast. And it's really about creating this community that I wish I have to support me and to help me feel less alone in this whole adulthood experience. And so because of that, 
it keeps me moving forward. I just always think about it whenever I feel discouraged because I know that what I want to create, it's also a very huge dream and a big vision and it's not easy to just get it like that. And so I need a lot of patience and perseverance and reminder about my why to help me to get there. And that's it for this episode. I hope that by sharing these learnings that I have with you, that it will encourage you to pursue the dream that you have. And if you really do take action or if you are inspired, let me know through Instagram or by answering to the Q&A on my Spotify. And I cannot wait to see you in my next episode. Oh, remember, if you have a topic request or you have any feedback, you can also fill up the form, okay? That's it that I have for you today. And I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye. Bye-bye.